Hello, my name's Miles, and this is Steam Graveyard, the gaming series where I unearth the lost games of the Steam store. Today's game is Incandescent. So first of all, um, I think they forgot something in this game, like the screen that pops up whenever you start it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just pure black. There's nothing here. Um, yeah, that's, uh... That's not good. I mean, you want a nice presentation whenever you open up your game. It's just some color, you know, a splash of color, uh, something, an image. Um, it doesn't even have to be animated or anything, just just something. But it, no, it's, it's just pure black. Very odd. And I mean, I know that, you know, uh, title screens and things like that, you know, they, they take a bit of time, you know, you have to have you know, skills and art to actually be able to do it. But, you know, there's enemies in this game and there's bosses and things that you could just put a picture of the boss on the screen or something like that. Just anything, just, just anything. But <laughs> don't leave it black. Uh, anyway, it doesn't really get you pumped up and jazzed up to play the game if you're introduced to just a black, bland screen. Anyway, so the first thing I want to say about this game is that it is a budget title. It only costs uh, about a dollar, and I think it's 80p in the UK. So don't expect too much from it. But I thought the screenshots looked pretty decent, and this is my type of game. So I thought I'd pick it up and try it out and see what it's like. Uh, I also wanted to say that this game was programmed just by one person, and the artwork was done by another person. And together, they make the audio. And a uh, lovely little tribute there to uh, the person's mother. This is for you, Mum. I miss you every day. Oh, that's very nice. And special thanks to Avery Pie. Anyway, um, uh, Joel, Joe Coleman, make a, make a title screen, please. Make a title screen. <laughs> um, okay, so let's jump in. This game is incredibly simple. There is no real menu screen. Um, this is the graphics settings. Not much, not anything special there. Uh, how to play, uh, very simple. Uh, left click to shoot, WSD to move, and right click to bomb. And the only objective you have is to survive. Just kill everything on the screen to uh, finish that wave. Next wave comes along, kill everything on the screen, keep playing. There's no other game modes. So you press start game and here you go. So the first thing that you'll notice is that it's got a very sort of uh, Geometry Wars type aesthetic to it. That sort of uh, basic geometric shapes outlined with uh, that sort of neon light. Although I will say, unlike Geometry Wars, the controls are quite stiff. Now, I've played this game a couple of times. Um, I actually recorded the entire episode already. Well, no, um, I, I didn't record it. That was the problem. I forgot to press record, so this is my second time playing through it now. Uh, yeah, I was a little, uh, just a, a tad annoyed that I had forgotten to press record. But not this time, I think. I hope. So I kind of know what I'm doing here. Although there's not much to do, like I said. There's a different variety of pickups that you can get, different power-ups. Some of them are for your weapons and some are for your mobility. So this one, of course, is called Tri-Fire, which lets me, uh, well, fire three times at a time. I also picked up a booster. So that makes my ship go a little bit faster. I feel like it also gives me a little bit of a, a push as well. Like you, you kind of slide a little bit instead of just uh, stopping dead whenever you stop pressing uh, the direction key. So the uh, top of the screen you can see the my life bar is the little blue line that kind of fills up and uh, drops as I take damage. To the left is the bombs I have, little bomb icon, very nice little icon. And to the right, my ship count, so I've got a specific amount of lives. Um, I'm not sure if there's actually a way to increase the amount of ship lives that I have though. 
I got pretty far. A actually, the uh, the first time I played this, I got the uh, third highest rank in the game. Uh, the third highest score of the game. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Though I've seen quite a bit of this. Um, I think I got up to wave 42 the last time. Um, and then I quit because I, I was spending way too much time on the game, actually. Not so much because I was enjoying it, but simply because I'd seen it all. So I'll explain that later. But for now, you know, this is the starting waves. Uh, every tenth wave there is a boss that pops up, and there's a few different bosses in the game. So I'm at wave 9 at the moment, so uh, next wave will be a boss. And they seem to be picked randomly. Oh, here we go. So we've got a nice big starship now coming after me. Uh, I'm gonna pop my uh, my special, my bomb. So there you go. That's uh, Actually, it's not too good for bosses. It's more for, uh, you know, whatever you, uh, you sort of... Uh, like a panic button, you know, like a panic attack. <laughs> I don't mean like a panic attack, like anxiety thing, but like, you know, you panic and then you attack with the bomb. Uh, because it does clear the screen. Uh, one thing I did want to note is that, I don't know, the, the animations of all of the ships feel very... mechanical. They don't, you know, they, they don't really... I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe. They're very, um, sort of like square in their their movements. It doesn't feel very, very natural. And uh, it's something that I don't really like. I, I don't like that it they sort of turn on a dime like that and, you know, they follow very strict lines. I like in these type of games, you know, uh, like Geometry Wars, you know, that they do kind of flow and they kind of shape around, you know, the movements that they make. I think it's something that I, I've really uh, noticed and appreciate in other games now because, uh, you know, uh, this gaming series is just one of the things that I do for my channel. I also do a, a little, uh, like, vlog thing every once in a while. I mean, very, very sporadically I make the vlogs. But um, one thing that I work on all the time is my sci-fi show. So uh, in this sci-fi series, you know, um, that I'm still making, uh, one of the things that I've had to do was learn CGI and learn special effects and, uh, you know, uh, digital effects. And the very first thing that you do, um, I'm, I'm self-teaching myself, and the first thing that I've, I've, I've learned to do was to, uh, to move just a, a simple object, simple shape, like a square, you know, from position A to position B. That's your most basic form of CGI, most basic type of animation. And uh, so you do that and, and you know, it goes well. And then you're like, okay, well, uh, you know, you move on from like moving an object from point A to point B to point C, and then maybe start making curves instead of simple lines. And what you, uh, you figure out very quickly is that whenever you just set a, uh, a shape or an object to move, you know, from position A to B, it's very, it's very mechanical and it looks it looks like someone just programmed, you know, a square to move in, you know, those directions. It doesn't feel like, you know, like it's alive or like it's really you know, organic or anything like that. It really does just seem like somebody is making CGI. So what you learn to do is um uh, well, well, that's because uh, the velocity of the object is actually moving um, at a constant. So it's from A to B, it's going, you know, the same speed. But what you learn to do is... Oh, jeez, I just lost my first life there. Yeah, what you learn to do, though, is uh, to change up the velocity and to actually put a curve to it so that there's a little bit of a speed up at the very beginning and a slowdown at the, at the end. And it just makes it look better. It makes it all just feel just more alive and uh, that's something that I don't see happening in this game the uh, velocities of the ships are very much just static and and because of that it's very 
it, it looks like a video game. You know, it, it's programmed. It looks like it's being programmed to be, you know, okay, this thing's going to move here. This thing's going to move here. It doesn't feel organic and alive. And you know, it's very digital and, um, you know, minimalist uh, graphics and everything. And there is a, certainly an element of, of it being, uh, you know, a, a purely mechanical type of game. But I still feel like it just doesn't look right. It just looks out of place. So you can see each uh, boss there had a little um, health bar, just uh, exactly the same as myself. So I'm on wave 21 now. You can see that the... Uh, uh, We've pretty much seen all of the enemies that are in this game. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. Like I said, I've already gotten up to wave 42, and there wasn't anything new. But yeah, that was a big thing that I wanted to point out, was that, uh, yeah, this is the game. It's the the, the borders and the, the background, they never change, no matter how far you get. No matter uh, what wave you're on, they're always the same. So this is really the game that you're looking at. And uh, as for the the, um, the sort of <laughs> reason to play it, I guess, uh, it is a, it, it's very much like the old arcade games. It's simply to just play it, see how far you can get, and uh, get a high score. Again, you can see some of the pickups that I'm getting uh, rapid fire on at the moment. So yeah, I, I, I tend to like these type of games um, a lot, you know, like twin stick shooters. Uh, my favorite arcade game of all time, you know, was Robotron. And this is, uh, you know, I mean, like all, you know, twin stick shooters, you know, have that game to kind of live up to. And, you know, um, that was the sort of granddaddy of the genre. So it's, uh, I, I think it's nice, you know, to have uh, these games come out still, you know, that are just pure arcade experiences, you know, where you do just, uh, you just play for the fun and, and for the points kind of thing. And you, you'd be amazed, you know, if it's a good game, you'd be amazed uh, just how much uh, gameplay and um, how much you can really get into a game like that. That's why Robotron is so good. Or is so uh, played still today. The uh, core gameplay is just, um, that, you know, repetitive core gameplay is just perfect. I mean, everything about that game, I, in my opinion, is perfect. So even though you do have these more modern games, you know, that look a little bit better and, and play a little bit faster and have more depth and different game modes, Robotron still, you know, it's, it still kicks a lot of their asses. Just purely because it, the that core experience is just so good. One thing that uh, I, I've been thinking about, you know, is like what type of game am I best at? You know, what type of genre or you know game type do I excel at the most? And you know, I I've thought about it for for years, and you know, I, I kind of do think that this is my type of my type of game that I'm best at. I mean, I say that now, but I am very possibly going to uh, look, you know, pretty bad while I'm playing this. But uh, yeah, I do kind of consider myself being better at these games than any other type. Whenever I was in my teens, you know, I played a lot of first-person shooters. Um, I was, I, I, you know, I really could have played professional on uh, Unreal Tournament because that game was just. Man, I, I got good at that game, let's just say. I don't really remember ever losing in it. And then I was playing, like, God Mode and stuff, and just crazy. I, I went back and played God Mode again uh, a couple of years back, and I, I, I had no idea how I managed to do it. But yeah, I used to play that game, like, at max uh, difficulty with bots and then online, you know. Really great.
So yeah, I think, uh, you know, for a modern game, this this could do with a little bit something else. But again, because of the price, you know, it's understandable that there's not more to it. You know, and it, it's fine, you know, if uh, if a developer, you know, a game creator wants to, to make something quick. Or, you know, not, not spend, you know, years of their lives on. And instead just make something that's, uh, you know, quite simple. As long as, you know, the price tag goes along with it. So there you go, I'm using my uh, special my bomb there, which really clears the screen. And like I said, you can see there uh, the uh, health tracker for the boss. I will say one thing I... I uh, well, another thing that I don't really like about this game is that uh, there's not that many bosses. I think we've seen this boss already through this playthrough. So there's already a bit of repetition. Um, also with the enemies, we've seen all the enemies. That's it. It's just uh, these these same ones. And... I mean, that wouldn't be that big of a problem. Again, in Robotron, I think there is like four or five different enemies in that game and that's it. And it's just on repeat. But the, the difference with this game is that there is no... I mean, some of them shoot back projectiles, but... I mean, really, they all have pretty much the same behavior. These sort of, like, sponge, you know, tentacle things, they... They act a little bit differently, you know, they seem to sort of uh, dance around randomly on the screen, but... I mean, really, everything else is just sort of... The same. You know, in Robotron, there was these, uh, these... You know, there was a, only a few enemies, but they all had a, a different, uh... A different ability and a different a role to play. Like the uh, you had the the big green blocker guys who would just uh, you weren't able to kill them or anything, and they would just clog up the screen, and you'd be unable to move past them or take them out. And then you had the the normal enemies, which would completely swarm the screen. You could take them out, you know, one shot, but there was so many of them. And the, you know, the, the clever thing is you combine that with these, these green blockers and all of a sudden these simple enemies become really, really difficult because you've got the green blockers blocking your path and you're really having to think, you know, two steps ahead every time you play that game. I mean, like, really, like, you know, the, the more that game goes on, the more you have to think further and further ahead in every single thing you do. Until you sort of hit that Nirvana spot where, uh, your brain kind of almost shuts off and you're just playing the game and you don't know how you're doing it but you're you know destroying everything and getting past each uh, each wave there's also the uh, the big brain guys who would uh, show up and uh, they could take control of the civilians ah died again but I'm back up to two lives so I must have picked up something or I guess maybe every 10,000 points or 100,000 points I get another life? I'm not sure. Anyway, with Robotron, yeah, you would have these these brain guys who would infect the uh, the humans that you were trying to save. And uh, once that happened, um, you know, they would create even more uh, another type of enemy that was that would act and react in a different way. One of the really interesting enemies in the game was this one that would... It was quite easy to to defeat. I think it might have been linked with the brain guys. But uh, it would just... Uh, it would fly around the corners of the screen, you know, and across the walls and everything. And uh, it wouldn't, you know, cause you any bother. Until it... I think it had like a... After like five seconds or something, then it would eventually explode. And then you would have real trouble. You would have all this this stuff flying around the, around the screen. But uh, but it was interesting because you knew that this thing was ticking down at the co in the corner of the screen, you know, uh, flying around, you know, on the edges, and it wasn't causing you any bother at that particular moment. But you had to strategize and think, okay, I've got to take it out before it explodes, or else it's going to really really mess me up here. 
So even though it's a it's an old game, you know, from like mid eighties, it uh, it had a lot of gameplay to it. it had a lot of uh, intelligence that really went into it. So I think this game could really benefit from having uh, a bigger diversity of enemies. I think that's uh, a big problem, especially whenever you're going through wave after wave after wave. You know, and they don't even seem to be, you know, changing up their speed, you know, increasing their speed or anything, you know, the, the further that I get. It just sort of seems like the same difficulty almost. It's just, you know, fatigue starts to set in. The wave 39. Oh, well, those are quicker, actually. And it's slowed down again. That's odd. Maybe I picked up, uh, an, like, a debuff thing or some sort of enemy buff uh, power-up. Not sure. That was odd. One of the things that actually does really annoy me about this game is that you can see that every time you, you kill an enemy, you have this big, you know, chromatic explosion. And yeah, it looks okay, but the problem is I want to see, I want to be able to see where the enemy projectiles are coming from. And whenever you have everything exploding on the screen, it tends to get, you know, it tends to just, just disappear with the, the rest of the explosions. You know, you need to be able to see where these shots are coming from. And it's very, very difficult at times. I feel that the projectiles should maybe be bigger or, you know, a unique color to themselves. I mean, I guess the colors are coordinated to the ship firing them. You know, my blue against his orange. But I still feel that they're, they're very difficult to see. Another odd thing about this game is that... The uh, the resolution that I've got it on, I think it's at uh, 2025 or something like that. Uh, I specifically bumped it up from 10, 1080. Yeah, 1080, I think it was that. Um, because, uh, well, because the option was there. But I noticed that the game actually zooms out after that. Uh, originally, I played this on, uh, you know, 1080p or 1080. And yeah, the, this whole screen was zoomed in, which meant that uh, you had far, far less time to actually see the projectiles coming. Uh, so that's kind of a weird thing that it actually scales the entire game with the resolution. You know, older games used to do that. Do that. Uh, Diablo was pretty famous for that. Diablo is still locked at like, <laughs> I think it's. Oh, what is it, like 720 or something? Maybe even not even that, like 680 resolution? And Blizzard refused to increase it because they think that it'll... Uh, because by increasing the resolution, you, you zoom out the map and you'll be able to see more. And so Blizzard doesn't want to do that because they're afraid uh, it'll give people a, a benefit uh, on PvP to players who have uh, better computers. The problem is that it's, you know, 2018 and everybody can play Diablo 2 on, like, max settings. Probably, you know, like, 10 times the resolution that it was made at, so... Kind of a silly, silly thing for them to say. Silly is a, a nice way of me putting it. I am, uh, very dubious about some of the decisions that Blizzard make. So yeah, there's really not all that much to say about this game. Yeah, you've kind of seen it all. Uh, same enemies keep coming, same bosses start repeating. That's about it. I think I'm actually gonna end it there. So, yeah. I mean, the graphics are serviceable. I get the whole, you know, basic neon colored thing. It's fine, but... Again, those animations, I just don't like the animations, really. I feel that they could be smooth. Also, the controls of the ship. I don't know if they play better on a controller, but you can see they're very... You know, the kind of movements that I'm making, they're very, um... Linear. One other thing that I want to say about this game is that there is no way to save, either. 
Uh, that's something that I've mentioned before in other games is a personal gripe of mine. Um, and because this game is, well, practically infinite, you can keep playing it forever, there should really be the ability to save. I mean, I get it, you know, in the old days, you know, whenever you were at the arcades trying to get their high score, you know, obviously you wouldn't have the ability to save. But, you know, if you're playing the game at your own house and you really, you know, if you really enjoy the game, then you're going to keep wanting to play it. And I don't feel like the high score should be solely based on how long you can play the game. You know, how long until you go until, you know, you need to go to the bathroom or you need to turn off the computer or you need to go to sleep. You know, if, if you're enjoying it, then you should be able to save. Just add a, a save and quit um, option. I don't really see what the problem is with that. It's not like you'd be cheating. It's not like you could save the game and then load it back up at a point where you, you know, had more lives or anything like that. There's no way to, to save scum doing that. It's just the equivalent of being able to pause the game, but yet you're able to turn it off turn off the entire system and, and everything like that, you know, and save, you know, your electricity. Instead of having to, you know, pause the game and leave everything running for, you know, days or hours or whatever it is until you come back to it. Just add a little save and quit feature. So there you go, I've uh, died now. Um, you can see the game over screen, there is a little stat thing, so it tells you how long you've played. Uh, the amount of deaths and your kills and all that sort of stuff. Waves completed, which is pretty important. And yeah, that's it really. So I got in the top 10, so put my name in. And there you go, top of the leaderboard. Woohoo. This is another problem that I have with the game. The leaderboard seems to be an internal one. What that means is that it's not a leaderboard that is based on the players who played the game. It's based on sort of uh, random high score numbers that were recorded into the game. You know, the programmer thought like, oh, well, you know, it'll probably be really difficult for someone to get, you know, uh, what is that amount? 500,000? So they put that as the top score. But it's not its not a real high score. You know, you're not really competing with anybody. You're just competing with the, the self-programmed scores, which, yeah, I mean, this is the third time I've played this game now, um, and I've beaten my high score. Well, I've beaten all the high scores. So, you know, I mean, that's your, your main source of replayability is wanting to, to beat the high scores. And if you've already done it in, you know, 20 minutes, the first 40 minutes of playing the game, then it doesn't really make you feel like playing it again to, to beat it. I mean, why would you? You're the best at the game, apparently. <laughs> so that was Incandescent. It's a very generic and it is a low budget game. I don't think there is all that much reason for you to really go out and get it. I mean, maybe, you know, if you if you want something to play during your breaks or, you know, lunch or something like that, you know, and you're really into twin stick shooters, you know, for the price, it's 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 OK. Uh, I think the price is very, very paramount, you know, it being anything more than, you know, a buck. I think no, nah, I definitely pass. But, you know, for the price, it's OK. Certainly not something that I would really go out of my way to recommend, though. It's just okay. It's generic. It other games do it better. Um, I will say uh, I think this might be you know more of a, a testing or a sort of getting used to things uh, for this programmer. I think uh, you know this is a good starting point you know for game design. So well done to them, and I wish them the best of the luck. Uh, let me see what's their name. Uh, Crab Crabo Gaming. So Crabo Gaming. Yeah. Good luck to you in the future. I'll have to check out some of your other things. And that's about it. Um, really not much to say. It's uh, pretty self-explanatory and it is what you see. Well, thanks again for joining me on another Steam Graveyard and I will see you next time. Bye for now.